So in a game, or a 3D application of any kind, you often want to show highly detailed objects like this chair, but what if you move far away from the object? It doesn't make sense anymore to pay the full cost of rendering that object. What you want to do is fall back to a lower detail version of that object, like this chair. And these simplified versions of a mesh are called LODs, and each mesh can have up to seven of them. And they're labeled in descending order of level of detail. So LOD0 would be the high detail original mesh, and LOD7 would be the least detailed version of this mesh. So over here, we have two chairs. The blue one has LODs set up for it, and the yellow one doesn't. And you can't really tell, but as we zoom far away from it, the blue one is getting less and less detailed, and the yellow one is staying the same. We'll be able to see what's going on here much more easily if we use a special view mode called the Mesh LOD Coloration View Mode. So if you click in the top left corner of the viewport on this button that says Lit, that's our view mode button. And within that there's a submenu called Level of Detail Coloration, and if we choose Mesh LODs, we'll switch to the Mesh LOD Coloration View Mode. Now in this mode, meshes change colors to indicate what LOD they're using. So as we move farther away from the blue chair, it switches to red, then green, and if we had more LODs, it would change colors further to indicate that it's changing level of detail. Meanwhile, the yellow chair stays exactly the same, because it doesn't have any LODs yet. I'm going to switch back to the default view mode, which is the lit view mode, and for that you can also press Alt-4, and I'm going to add some LODs to the yellow chair. So I'm going to right-click on it in the scene, and click Edit, or you could also just find it in the content browser and double-click on it there and that's going to open it in a new tab. On the right, you have something called the Details panel, which shows us a lot of information about this mesh, and lets us change a bunch of its settings. But for now, what we're interested in is this category, LOD settings. Now suppose we had made an LOD model manually using 3D Studio Max or Maya or something like that. We could use the LOD Import option to import that LOD, but that's not what we're going to do right now. Instead, we're going to automatically generate a bunch of LODs for this mesh. So we're going to find the LOD Group option, and from the drop-down, we're going to select Small Prop, although you could select any of these. We're going to say yes at the prompt, which is just asking us if we want to overwrite our existing LOD settings for this prop. Uh, we don't have any, so we're going to say yes. And you can see that some settings have changed automatically on the right. We now have a number of LODs set to 4, which is the number of LODs that has been predefined in the Small Prop LOD group. And if we use the LOD picker here, which is currently on LOD Auto, we can choose LOD 0, 1, 2, and 3. And if we choose 3, we'll see just how much lower detail the chair now is. If we switch back to Auto, and you can also switch it in the top left of the viewport here, it's hard to tell, but as we move farther away from the chair now, it is switching to the lower detail meshes we generated. And you can watch the LOD counter in the top left and see how it changes from 2 to 1 to 0 as we get closer to the mesh. And if you watch the triangles, you see that it starts out at around 1700. Already it's down to 890. And now it's at 444. And if we generate LODs like this for every mesh in our product, it could easily add up to a dramatic performance increase, especially on lower spec hardware. Now, most of the time, the generated LOD result is good enough, but there are times when you'll want to tweak specific settings individually per LOD. And a quick way to do that is by ticking the custom box on the LOD picker. If you tick the custom box, the details panel will actually show you settings for all of the LODs at the same time. As an example of this, let's look under LOD0, which is our highest detail LOD, and look under reduction settings. We can change percent triangles to something like 50%. It's on 100 right now. And if we click apply, LOD0 will actually be half as detailed as it was before. That's not very pronounced, so let's switch it to 5% which we can't miss, and click Apply again. So LOD0 now has roughly 5% of the triangles as it had before. I'll go ahead and set that back up to 100, but it is worth noting that sometimes you can get quite a good result by decreasing the percent triangles by only a little bit, like 90%. Here we saved a few hundred triangles, but the chair looks basically the same. Often on a project, you'll need to generate LODs for many meshes at once. Luckily, this isn't a process that has to be undergone manually. To generate LODs for a large number of meshes at once, simply select them all in the content browser, right-click on one of them, and under the Asset Actions submenu, find Bulk Edit via Property Matrix. 
The property matrix is an interface for making changes to properties on many assets at once. In this case, we want to expand the LOD settings category on the right and type the name of an LOD group, for instance, small prop, like we used before, and press enter. This will immediately generate LODs for all the meshes we selected using that LOD group. Going back into the scene and using mesh coloration mode, we can see that all of these assets are now LODing, and now any scene we make that uses these meshes will be less expensive to render.